Hello everybody, I hope everyone is doing well and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be doing my June Roundup. Don't worry, I'm not going to say my classic line that I mention in every single one of these videos. I honestly feel like June felt long. Anyone else? Just me? If you aren't familiar with my Roundup videos, I basically go through all of the products I brought into my collection and I give you a more thorough review after I was able to try out the products for a longer period of time. I separate the products into three categories. The first one is my absolute favorites, the things that I'm going to be using a lot in my everyday life and on my channel. The second one are the products that I did like, but I have a few things that I'm iffy on or I don't find them to be the most unique. And my last category is my disappointments or just products that I found unremarkable. I did have to leave out a few products out of this one since I only got to use them once, so my initial thoughts still remain the same. I just have a few, so I'll definitely update you my thoughts on these throughout the month of July. And those products are the Laura Mercier Oil-Free Tinted Moisturizer, the Rouge Beauty Mascara, as well as the Lip Palette. You can use this on the cheeks and eyes, and I just want to try that out before giving you my final opinions. And the Pat McGrath blushes. So many of you told me to retry those, so I will definitely do so before including them in a roundup. So now that I've given you the what's what, I would love for you to subscribe if you aren't already. It means so much to me, and let's get to it. I feel like this month was full of bronzer discoveries. I actually have three in my favorites, so I think I'm going to start there. The first one I discovered was the Danessa Myricks Beauty Power Bronzer. I use the shade Light. I did quickly swatch it on the back of my hand so you can see it against my skin tone. I love this one so much. I purchased this with the intent of it just giving a subtle amount of definition and bronze and it just does exactly that. And I adore the formula. I find it to be incredibly unique because it's very subtle and natural looking, but it also is on the more full coverage side, if that makes any sense. Similar to the Huda Tan Tour in that way, but a lot more natural. And it does have a more natural finish. It has that nice skin-like glow running through it. It's not too dewy, not too matte, it's just incredible. And it blends out with ease, the application is super quick, it's effective, it's just everything I love and look for in a cream bronzer, and I'm so happy to have this in my collection. I highly recommend this bronzer, it's truly a gem. It's incredible. The second bronzer I discovered this month was the Glowish by Huda Beauty Soft Radiance Bronzing Powder. I use the shade 02 Medium the most often. And not only does this bronzer look beautiful in the pan, it also is beautiful on the skin. Many of you were asking how this one differentiates from the Huda Beauty Tan Tour, and I honestly have to say that it's pretty much the complete opposite from the Tan Tour. The Tan Tour is a matte cream that gives more of a sculpted effect, and it's perfect for more full glam looks. This one is a luminous powder that gives a very natural, everyday type of look. This bronzer here has become my new go-to if I'm in a rush, because no matter how sloppy my technique is that day, this still looks beautifully diffused. It's pretty much foolproof, and I find it to be quite unique as well. The sheen that it adds is stunning. It's not too metallic looking, nor does it look too highlighty on the skin. It just gives this luminosity that looks natural. Here, I'll quickly swatch this one here. Again, this shade is very natural on me. You can barely see the swatch, but once it's built up on my face, I swatched it right here. So you can see it's very, very light, and it just gives me a super subtle amount of bronze, and I love that. The last bronzer in my favorites category is the e.l.f. Putty Bronzer. This quickly made it into one of my favorites of this month. It's so unique and so beautiful and easy to use. It's just everything as well. I find that this one is a lot more sheer compared to the Danessa Myricks one. It almost looks like a stain when it's on your skin, and when you apply it, it feels like a cream, but then it dries down to this powdery state, so it lasts a very long time, especially in this heat wave that Canada is experiencing right now. This has stayed on my face. I use the shade Tan Lines, and I did quickly swatch it here as well. It's right here. I didn't wipe off the Huda Beauty swatch, so you can see this one's a bit more defining for my skin tone, but it still looks quite natch on the face, if you will. I know their putty products are some of their best sellers, and I bet this is going to be on there quite shortly. Incredible product, they really killed this formula, and the shade range. Incredible shade range. 
props to you elf because the drugstore shade ranges need help they need help that's for sure speaking about the putty products they also launched this one which is the acne fighting putty primer before this one I have not tried the original one so I can only speak for this one I can't compare it in any way first of all I adore the color this is my favorite color as of right now this kind of matcha seafoam green color is just everything for me right now but now speaking about the product and not the color as you guys know I'm not much of a primer person if I am using a primer I'm either using like the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip if I really need my makeup to stay on or I'm using a glow enhancing product to give me more glow underneath my base product. But this right here has been on my face every single day since I got it in my collection. It's honestly incredible since I'm experiencing a lot more texture these days. It's been incredible just to smoothen that out and blur my skin. And it has salicylic acid which really helps to kick the acne out. <laughs> So not only is this great makeup wise, it also benefits my skin and I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Following up, I have a product here from Flower Beauty. This is the Day Glow Highlighting Glaze. I use the shade Ablaze and this is so nice. I'm usually not a bomb highlighter type of person, especially like this year. It's not, not my go-to look, especially for my oily skin. But this one is pretty much exactly like the Nude Sticks Bubbly Bebe, or I'm blanking on the other highlighter I used to use all the time. If you aren't aware, I no longer support Nude Sticks, so I've been looking for products that are similar to theirs because I did really enjoy their products at one time. So this just gives me everything that the nudies glow gave me in the past and it's just a stunning warm color. I really like how it's this hydrating formula but it also has this incredibly beautiful pearl running through it that just adds a ton of glow and it just makes me look nice and dewy and glowy without feeling really sticky or heavy either. Once it's on my face for a little bit it gets less tacky so to speak. Your hair will still kind of stick to it if you get like a big gust of wind but it's nothing crazy like if you turn your head real fast your hair is not going to like plaster onto your face. I've been using this a lot and since I have been experiencing some more texture in these areas it's just been incredible to kind of rehydrate that area. It doesn't enhance any of the texture, it just looks incredible. So all that goes to say that I'm very happy with this discovery. I feel like it's filled a void that I've been missing in my collection. And plus this one is on the more affordable side, so huge win in my books. To be honest, you guys, I think the sun is going to beat me with this video. I think the sun is going to set while I'm filming this. <laughs> Who knows? My next favorite this month was the Kosas Cloud Set Powder. I've made quite a significant dent in this powder. This has been the only one I've been using on an everyday basis, so I'm very familiar with this one, and it is incredible. The hype is real and worth it. It does such an amazing job at blurring your skin while still not cutting all of the shine. It still allows you to look glowy, set. I honestly couldn't ask for a better pressed powder. And this one is also incredible if you just need to touch up your makeup during the day. If you're starting to get a little bit oily, a few little taps of this and you're set, literally. This one is also very comfortable to wear. It doesn't give any tightening feelings at all. Once it's on, you just don't even know it's there. It's fantastic. By the way, I use the shade Feathery. Yes, so this has been another gem. I feel like it's a hybrid of the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finished Powder and the Pat McGrath Loose Setting Powder. I honestly feel like I could rave about this powder all day. I have another favorite from Danessa Myricks here, and these are the Color Fix Mattes. I purchased three shades. I actually never use chocolate, so I can only speak for these two colors, Exposed and Lift. Lift is the white one, and I find this one to be very versatile. You can use it in so many different ways. I used it as a base. I mixed a matte, colorful eyeshadow into it to create a custom shade. I used it on its own, and every way possible was really, really great. The only thing I will say with mixing in another powder does get a little bit chalky, but that just makes sense. But yet, it still worked, so I win. There they are on my hand. So you can see that this one is like a mid-tone shade for my skin tone, and it's just stunning all over the eye. This formula is incredible to work with. It's super easy to use. You get a lot of playtime, and you're able to really diffuse it. 
but it does set eventually and it doesn't leave a tacky feeling at all. Plus a tiny bit of this stuff goes such a long way, it's incredible. I feel like I'm going to have this until I am an old lady. And on top of that, she has like a million shades in these. So there's something for everyone. Neons, metallics, different finishes, anything you want, she's got it for you. I feel like this one was a dangerous discovery on my end anyways. I feel like every time I'm going to be purchasing something from Sephora, I'm going to want to pick up a new color. I don't know if this is too bold to say, but it's probably become one of my top three favorite cream eyeshadow formulas. I said it, I said it. Next up, I have the Fenty Beauty Bright Fix. I actually love this stuff. I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I do the first time I tried it out. I was a little bit nervous about it. It wasn't really what I was expecting, but it turned out good. 100% <laughs> people are going to either love this or hate this. If you are someone who likes a more natural approach to your makeup, like a no makeup makeup vibe, I think you would really enjoy this because it brightens up my under eyes like crazy, but it still allows my under eyes to shine through in a way. So I look awakened, but it's like a barely there look. It's really interesting and it's not really anything anyone wants in like a concealer type product, but I just really like how this looks all by itself without any base products or paired with like a skin tint. I think it's a stunning look and it's definitely filled a gap in my collection. It super stands out to me. I think it's really cool. If what I just described doesn't sound appealing to you, you're not going to like this. The only thing negative I have to say about this product is the packaging sucks. <laughs> because you can't really control the amount you squeeze out. Sometimes a bunch comes out, sometimes just a tiny bit comes out, and I find that I do waste a bit more product than I would like. Next up, I have the Kosas Brow Products. This has become my new brow routine. This has been the only thing in my eyebrows since my full face of Kosas. I'm going to be talking about these in conjunction since I use them one after the other. First, the pencil is incredible. The packaging is super cute. I also like how it's in a square packaging so it doesn't roll around my desk at all. It just stays put once I put it down. I love that there's a spoolie on the other side. That's my preferred eyebrow pencil packaging, but now talking about the actual product inside, it's really, really great. I actually fell in love with this shape here. I'm usually not a fan of the triangle brow pencils, but this one is super, super tiny. So it allows you to draw on these little fine hair like strokes if you're wanting to, or you can get a really nice defined line. And it also fills in the brow really quickly too. And the formula is nice. It's not too pigmented and not too waxy, so it doesn't leave a shine behind. It almost looks kind of airbrushed when you're putting it in your brows. That's what it looks like against the skin underneath my brow hairs. It's beautiful. It builds up slowly, so you're not left with very filled in brows. It's not too creamy, so I'm not going to run through this pencil like crazy. It's just phenomenal. I don't have any negative feelings towards this pencil. <laughs> And for the brow gel, this one is incredible. I love how there's a little bit of a sheen in here so it gives more dimension to my brows. It also has an incredible hold and it makes my brows look very fluffy. So what more could I ask? I do still prefer the M Cosmetics brow cream wand. I find that that's easier to kind of coat every hair and control in that way, but this formula is super easy and quick to use, so it's unbeatable. It's definitely too soon to know or say if this product has overtaken my love for the M Cosmetics Brow Cream, but it's a runner up. It's a runner up. We'll just say that. Next up, I have a mascara from Flower Beauty. I fell in love with this as soon as I put it on. It reminds me so much of the Marc Jacobs At Lashed Mascara, and I don't know the future of that mascara, I don't know what's going on with Marc Jacobs right now, so I'm so happy I found this. The only thing though is that the wand is a little bit big and I find that I get little dots on my eyeshadow. I just have to be a little bit more cautious and present when I'm applying this to my lashes. I feel like that's all I need to say. It reminds me of the Marc Jacobs at Lashed favorite. Ding, ding, ding. I forgot that I need to leave out one more product from this roundup. That's the Patrick Ta eyeshadow palette. I only used it once in that initial video. So those are my only thoughts. So I'm going to use this a couple more times next month 
and I'll let you know my thoughts on a later date. So that wraps up all of my favorites from this month. Now let's move on to my second category, my likes. First starting off with the Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Powder. I use the shade Precious Petals. I've used this a couple times now. I've only had one negative experience and I used just too much of this and I couldn't get it back to a natural looking state or something that suits my preferences. I feel like you need to really tread lightly with this one because it can get out of hand very quickly. And this one, when it does get out of hand, it tends to add a lot of texture. So I just like to skim the top of the powder once with my highlighting brush and then I'll kind of apply it to the high points of my face first. Then I'll really buff it into my skin so it gets that kind of natural glow without being too much. But once it's applied in that manner, it looks stunning. I see myself using this one quite a bit. When it's applied like that, it looks a lot like a lot of my other favorite highlighters that are on the more high-end side. The only downside is that you have to be a little bit more cautious of what you're doing and it does take a bit more time. The second product I have in here is the Flower Beauty Heat Wave Luminous Bronzer. So I rediscovered this at the beginning of this month and I was really enjoying it and then I just completely forgot about it and then I really sat with myself for a second and asked if this really stood out compared to my other drugstore favorite bronzers and honestly no. Plus the shade range really needs some expanding. I feel like a lot of Flower Beauty products need major expanding. I feel like that needs to be discussed a bit more. I believe there's only two shades available in this one. This is the deepest one and it lightly, lightly shows up where my skin tone is at right now. But speaking about the finish and the formula, it is really nice. It blends really nicely and the finish is also pretty. It adds a ton of glow, but it doesn't look too much. It also sinks into your base beautifully. I just don't find this one to be the most unique or exciting for my collection. Next up, I have the new Ilia Balmy Tint Hydrating Lip Balms. I believe these replaced their sheer lipsticks, and I do prefer the older lipsticks compared to these. They have a good amount of pigmentation. I just mixed up the colors. I don't know which one is which now. This one right here is the shade Hold Me. This one over here is Wanderlust. I honestly feel like I'm very picky with tinted lip balms because I feel like there's just so many on the market right now and they all feel the same and they all vary in price points. I honestly feel like you don't need to spend that much money for a tinted lip balm. There's great options at the drugstore, but these ones are quite nice. I feel like their finish is a bit more unique. They do have a nice sheen running through them, but they're nothing really glossy or super balmy like. They almost give me like a natural sheer lipstick kind of vibe, but it does have this thicker consistency. It does feel like there's a bit of powder running through it in a way when you rub your lips together. It almost feels like it has a bit of silicone running through it, that slippy kind of matte texture. So all that goes to say that I do find these to be a bit more unique. They just don't tickle my fancy in a way. Like I don't really reach for these much. I have to remind myself that I have these, then I'll reach for them. They're not like a automatic favorite. I just feel like I'm super picky and harsh when it comes to tinted lip balms and I, uh, I don't know. Next up, I have the Melt Cosmetics lipsticks. These are the repackaged ones. I just left it in here because it just is perfect and it's kind of fun to look at. They did repackage these and I do believe that they reformulated them a bit because I find them to be a lot more creamy than past ones I've owned. I think they're lovely. They have a very interesting shade range. If you're someone who likes funky colored lipsticks, Melt is the way to go. I do really enjoy how these ones wear, but I will say that they're not my all-time favorite lipstick formula at all, but they're my go-to if I want something a bit more lip-focused or funky. The downside for me is actually the fragrance in the lipsticks. I find it to be a little bit strong. It smells really good, but when it's under your nose for a long period of time, I get kind of headachey. So if you're sensitive to fragrance, I wouldn't recommend these because it can be a bit strong. But if that doesn't bother you and you like to have a scent on your lips, then this might be the way to go. And if you're funky, I think you'd really enjoy their lipsticks. And my last product in this category is the Huda Beauty Light Glow Obsessions 
This is a highlighting quad and for me I don't find this one to be the most versatile because I have to mix myself a shade to match me. For this one I have similar points that I had for the Wet n Wild highlighting powder. I find that this one can go south pretty quickly if you add too much it gets too metallic-y and false looking. But if you apply a tiny, tiny amount, it looks gorgeous. The finish almost reminds me of the Ilia Drawn in Decades highlighting powder, I believe, and that's one of my favorite powder highlights. I just have to really work at it to get it to the point I like. And I also find this one to be a little bit of a pain, just because I don't have a perfect shade in these quads. I have to make myself one to get a good shade for my skin tone. And plus, I'm just not going to use this pink one, if I'm being honest. I'm not a pink highlighter person. I'm a champagne, warm tone, kind of gold highlighting person. And that's it. I don't like anything else. <laughs> So that's my thoughts on this. But if you enjoy a very blinding looking highlight, I think you would enjoy this one. But if you're someone who's just looking for something a bit more natural or on the everyday side, I don't think this is the palette for you. I think this is too full glam for that vibe. Now let's get into my disappointments of the month. So the first one here is this mascara. This is from Pacifica, and this is the Vegan Collagen Fluffy Lash Mascara. The thing I really enjoy about this one is that it's full glass packaging. I think that's really cool, and I'd like to see that more often. But what's inside here, wand and formula, I don't like. I find it to be kind of on the cheap side, and it doesn't really do anything to my lash except kind of give it a tint. And sometimes that's a good thing. I really like the velour one for that point, but the only issue with this one is I find that it just slips off my lashes onto my cheekbones. So I wouldn't recommend this one. Another major disappointment, I'm really, really sad about this one, but the Bobbi Brown Intensive Skin Serum Concealer is possibly one of the worst concealers I've tried in a very long time. If you want your under eyes to crease, which I know you probably don't, this is your concealer. I don't know where I was going with that sentence, but yes, this is the most creasy concealer I have ever come across, and it looks very, very crepey under my eyes. It looks super texture enhancing. It falls right into every little crack or crevice I have under there. If I smile once, I'm ruined. It will settle into every little area, which I was so sad about because I am so in love with the foundation version of this product. I use that a ton. And the only reason why I haven't been using it is because I don't have a shade for my skin tone right now. So I was just hoping for the best with this. It's just completely opposite from that. It just does not look good. It only looks good immediately when you don't move a muscle. So this would only look good on Meryl Streep and Devil Wears Prada. My next disappointment is another Bobbi Brown one, and these are the Longwear Cream Shadow Sticks. I used this in a video, and I tried it out once more, and they, I still got the same result. These blend beautifully, they look really nice, they just are so sticky on the eyes, and they creased on me like crazy. Super sad, but they just remained too creamy for my eyes to handle, and it was just a disaster. And that's all I have to say for this really. It's just too sticky and crazy. Very sad. Next up, I have the Huda Beauty Glowish Multi-Dew Skin Tint. I had such high hopes for this product here. I was really hoping to fall in love with this. I loved the more natural approach for her brand. It's very different from anything else she's put out within her entire brand. But this was way too glowy for my skin type. I found that it looked like a highlighter spread all over my face. It kind of gave me minor Tin Man vibes. And the thing I found weird about this one is that the pearl running through this product was on the silver side. So it just looked very unnatural to me. And I also found this to be very texture enhancing and it also did not wear nicely at all. I found that as the day went on, it kind of lifted off from my face and as the day went on it felt heavier and heavier and I was more aware that I was wearing makeup which I don't like feeling it makes me feel a bit uncomfortable <laughs> so this one entirely was a no-go I also tried it a couple times as a underneath foundation highlight similar to how I would use my Hollywood flawless filter or my auric glow lust or anything like that but this just did not really affect the makeup uh, every time I did so I kind of forgot that I did that step and it was just kind of pointless. It didn't add any extra glow from within. It just did not do nothing. Did not do nothing. I have two products left for this video. They're both from Armani. 
So the first one is the face powder that they launched, I believe this month or maybe last month, the Luminous Silk Glow Fusion Powder. Sadly, this one was just awful entirely. I had a lot of hopes for this one because it looked incredible. It felt beautiful when I swatched it with my fingers. It's very velvety feeling, but on the skin, it's just a cakey mess. And on top of that, it adds like a silver reflect to your skin that looks unnatural, very similar to the glowish thing. I don't know what kind of pearl these people are using these days, but it's not good. It doesn't look natch. This powder just was not a good time. And I find the packaging to be a little bit too bulky for my liking. And eh, that's about it. That's about the amount of time I want to spend on that. And then lastly, I was quite disappointed in the Fluid Sheer Glow Enhancers. I tried out both of these shades and I had the same experience with both of them. I shook them up a ton. I tried to really melt it into my skin before applying it to my face. I tried it underneath foundation. I tried it on top of foundation. I tried to get these to work, but still got the same results every time. And I find that these have a weird amount of pearl and the pearl that's in here is a bit too big for my liking. It almost feels like there's not enough of that pearl in this liquid. So therefore, when it's on top of your cheekbones, I find like these little pearls kind of scattered around my face and it's not like a nice sweep of highlight. And the base texture here is a little bit too oily feeling and I found that it did break up whatever I had underneath of it or on top of it. In some cases, I just simply could not get these to work for the life of me. <laughs> I feel like I got a little bit dramatic in today's video, but it's just who I am. So there we have it. That wraps up this month's roundup. I feel like I found a lot of incredible gems this month and I feel really excited to look at my little pile over here. <laughs> but that is all for me today, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful. If you did, please give this video a like. It would help me out so very much. I'll make sure to link all of these products in the description down below as always, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Love you. Bye.